Hello everybody out there in internet wonderland. This is Chad from Chad Hershey's blog continuing on with my Prosper Now series. I hope you've had a chance to review the previous seven or eight volumes that we've been through. We're now on, I believe this is volume nine, and we're going to continue on with the crazy nature of reality. And as more and more people are waking up to the, to the true nature of who we really are, what this reality really is, it's just very, very exciting to see the overall awakening taking place. And uh, like we talked about before, uh, we live in a vibrational universe. Everything vibrates. And uh, one great example of this is a, uh, a lady called Juliet Nightingale, uh, or named Juliet Nightingale. I believe she's out of the UK. She's had numerous near-death experiences. And one of her near-death experiences, when she, of course, she left her body, because again, the body is just the vehicle that we use to experience this three-dimensional world here on planet Earth. But once she had this near-death experience, she actually looked out into, was out into the universe, looked, black, looked back on planet Earth, and, uh, and saw Earth as a vibrational entity and everything on it as a vibrational entity. And a good way to, to, to think of this is, remember the movie The Matrix? Uh, uh, the Matrix is, is so much in conjunction with true reality than most people are aware of. And remember on, uh, on the matrix, the computer screen, we all remember the, the, the green numbers and letters on the computer screen, and, uh, and that was the matrix. And so if you can envision when she was in her near-death experience looking back on planet Earth, seeing everything as a, as a vibrational electrical charge instead of in its physical form, which we see it because we decode it like that through our five senses. And... Um, Remember on the Matrix when Neo and that one uh, that one dude who was a traitor, uh, they were sitting there having a cup of coffee or something and looking at that computer screen and seeing all the uh, the the green numbers and letters and so forth. And he goes to Neo, he goes, "You probably look at this computer screen and see and see uh, you know computer graphics or numbers and letters." He goes, "I see a blonde there, I see a brunette there, I see a redhead there." Because again, he was in a different stage of, uh, of where Neo was, but he could de 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 decode that computer screen into actual physical reality, which is what we do with our five senses and with our eyes. Remember the um, story I said about the, um, about the, uh, the, the, the hypnotist who, who uh, hypnotized the guy to not decode the vibration of his daughter. Well, there's another story of a lady, I believe also over in England, she would rent her room to uh, people who wanted to meditate for long periods of time. And uh, this guy was in the room, he was meditating for a long period of time, and she came up to, to, to give the guy some tea, and uh, when she opened the door, she dropped the tea and she was just, uh, she couldn't believe what she saw, half the guy's body was gone. And basically his bottom half was invisible. What was happening here was that his, his body was going with his mind. He was in such a deep meditation where his, where his mind was going, his body was going. So therefore, half of him was invisible because that's where his meditation was taking him. And so there is the, there's so much out there. There's so much that, that uh, so much possible, so much out there that we can't even fathom uh, that we haven't experienced that we think, oh, it's a bunch of baloney. But there's so much out there that we have no idea it goes on, folks. And we can do all this ourselves. And um, because what we really are, are, are basically we're a giant antenna. We're a giant receiver walking around. Again, we're electrical beings vibrational beings and, and, and we're a huge antenna, if you will, taking in all the electrical forces, if you will, attracting to us like a giant magnet all the vibrations that match the level of our vibration. You ever, uh, you ever uh, remember the old rabbit ears for a TV or remember when you have a, a stereo and you have the wiring for, for an antenna and you're holding on to it and it sounds it sounds great. There's no static, or the picture looks perfect. No static. You let go of it. Boom! Now the the radio is all staticky again, and the picture is all full of uh, of uh, of that white snow. Well, why does the picture? Why does the sound become so clear when we grab it? Because again, we're giant electrical antennas, basically receiving in only that on the same which is on the same vibration as us again the law of attraction so imagine us as giant receivers 
And um, imagine the men on the moon, even though we didn't go to the moon, that was a big scam, that was a big Hollywood production, and that may blow some of you out of the water, but you can do your own research that we never went, went to the moon. It was a big Hollywood production, just like the movie Capricorn 1. Um, anyway, imagine if we did go to the moon, that they're on the moon, and they said, Houston, we have a problem. Mr. John Glenn, he thinks he's his spacesuit. Well, what do you mean? Well, John Glenn is in the spacesuit, but he thinks he's the actual spacesuit. Just like us. We are not, I'm not this body that you're looking at. You're not the body and the face that you look at in the mirror. That's just the, uh, the computer program. That's just the shell. That's just the garage that we have parked our spirit, our soul, our vibrational immortal being in to again experience the dimensions of this 3D planet Earth. And so that's a good way to put it that again we are not this body, we are immortal beings that, uh, that are all connected, we're all part of source energy and therefore we're all connected. Now um, one, of the, uh, one of the things I want to talk about also is, uh, is, is the mind real quick. And uh, when we can, when we can, you know, plant beliefs in our mind, positive beliefs or negative beliefs, because whatever you plant into your mind is what's going to happen into in your reality eventually. But why can we walk on coals? Well, you can walk on coals without burning your feet, because when you program your mind that the coals are not going to burn your feet they won't burn your feet. If that's not part of your reality for the coals to burn your feet, they can't burn your feet. If you believe they're going to burn your feet, you're going to burn your feet. But if you walk across hot coals and believe that the coals are not going to affect and burn your feet, they won't. That's again the same way that guy could not see his daughter because the belief in the guy's mind was was such that he couldn't decode the vibration of his daughter. And that's why you can walk on hot coals when you plant that belief that you're not going to burn your feet. And when I, uh, over the weekend, I went to, uh, went to meet some friends to uh, watch the football games. And before I went down there, I uh, sent my, uh, my spiritual guide ahead who does all my mundane tasks for me. He's called Norm Hill. I said, Norm Hill, I need a parking spot in 20 minutes downtown. Left it at that, got into the, in, into the car, went downtown, pulled up, boom, had two parking spots right where I imagined. Not one, but two. And this is in the middle of a Saturday afternoon in downtown. And uh, so again, uh, when I send my guys ahead, or I create my day, I, I, I pre-plan a segment, throw it out there, boom, it happens. And that's the beauty of this. One last thing before I go here is uh, I want to show you this, uh, this spoon. Uh, again, remember in the Matrix, when Neo heads to the um, uh, to, to meet, I uh, forget her name, but uh, to see if he's the one. Uh, and uh, he's in there, and basically he, he's, uh, he's, he, he's looking at uh, all the kids who are juggling, and that one kid has a, has a spoon, and is, is actually bending the spoon. And, uh, and then Neo grabs the spoon and tries to bend it, and the kid says, uh, don't try to bend the spoon, that's impossible. Instead, realize the truth. And Neo says, what's the truth? The truth is that there is no spoon, and it's not the spoon that bends, it's your mind. And that's how, when you, for, when you, when you get into a zone, you can uh, bend a spoon. Because again, even though the spoon looks solid, when you force your energy through it, the spoon is also vibrating, and boom, I have, I have trained my mind to believe that, you know, yeah, there is no spoon, but it's not the spoon that bends, it's my mind, and boom, I bent the spoon, and you can too. So, anyway, folks, thanks for listening. I know this is a long segment, awesome information being shared. Uh, peace and love and, uh, and, and prosperity to everyone. Make this day your masterpiece. Give love. Give what you want to receive back. And we're going to have peace and love in this world. And it's going to be an awesome place for all of us to live. It is an awesome place for all of us to live. Namaste. Bye for now.